I'm Jeff Van West, and I've been covering AirVenture at Oshkosh for more than a decade. But this year, I brought out my 13-year-old aviation fanatic son, Baxter. I knew he'd enjoy the show, and I figured he could help with the stories. But it turned out he was one of the stories. He flew the first leg to pick up a fellow traveler on what would be a two-day trip to Wisconsin. Oshkosh was IFR as we got close, so we landed at Janesville, not realizing there was a mini air show of aircraft bound for Oshkosh. Baxter started his show right then and there, striking up conversations and comparing his experience on the hyper-realistic combat sims he flies to the real aircraft. Details are best discussed in the real cockpit, so... So you guys know a lot about airplanes. You don't generally open it up for you know, the general public because it gets so busy and all, but uh, some, right. you know, you can tell some people have a more of an interest and appreciation. Two, um, fuel switches. Yes. So is there more than one fuel tank in each way? Yes. And yeah, this one has been modified. With and this was where the story really began. Not just about aircraft, but about people. Okay, we haven't even made it to Oshkosh yet. I've talked to two Vietnam vets about the Huey and SAD. Or not sad, I leaned in and got beyond the tape to get a good look in the cockpit of a Huey, which is sitting over there. And also, there's an AT-11 sitting right over there. It's a 1941 AT-11 that I just got a cockpit tour of. Yeah. It's been a good day. We made it to Oshkosh in the sweatiest, busiest arrival I've ever done, and the bold conversations with pilots continued about the Fokker D-8, the B-25, as well as the Cessna and the Cirrus. Honest interest gets rewarded, and people go the extra distance when sharing a passion, such as at the C-47 that led the D-Day invasion. See where the hole is? Yeah. There was a, there was an, a, a imagine a ball turret. Yes. It's it's a, a that sort of that came down, and there was a, a fixed plate and, uh, antenna okay. that was the earliest and best radar we had, and it was on this airplane because this was the lead airplane. Baxter had a bunch of questions about flying the P-51, including just starting it up. A friend of mine who actually flies them was willing to help, again in the context of a working cockpit. Baxter found out why his P-51 landings on the sim weren't working out as planned, airspeed, don't you know? But he also got to enjoy the status boost of kudos from the experts. What was that? He, he yelled out to the guys who were sitting underneath the plane, like, hey, do you hear this? This kid knows where all the missing switches are. <laughs> of course, not every detail can be divulged when you're talking combat simulation. However, that's all right when you get time up close and personal with your dream planes and their pilots. The DCS F-15 can't be as realistic as it says it is yet, because the maximum radar range is still classified. But like, look, look at that for a second. It's like, pan the camera around and look at the F-15. That's why I love that aircraft. It just looks great. It just looks great. He had a press pass and a green shirt, so I gave him some tips on framing photos and set him loose. A small burden of responsibility can make us stand a bit taller. But again, the biggest impressions were the people. So I was over at the P-47, I was going to take a photo of it because of the way the prop was set up, I'd get a nice high angle photo and I did. But there were these two guys standing in front of the plane talking. So I came up and asked them, like, hey, you know, I'm working with that web, you know, getting some photos, can you move away from the plane for a moment so I can get the photo? It was all in the back of my mind the entire time, like, is this guy a veteran? Did he fight in World War II? Because he's the right age. Turns out he's 89. He mentioned, you know, I serviced these things in World War II. So, as soon as he mentioned I was like, you know what, actually stay where you are. I'm gonna get a photo of you in the plane. I'm never gonna forget that. He's a sim guy, and getting your hands on the controls is best. So we hit the pilot proficiency center and got him involved in a video on the T-50A fighter trainer. Something simulated. It sort of gives a feeling like, yeah, you are, you are moving several tons of metal here. The show had its disappointments. I was hoping for something a little bit louder. And its unexpected surprises. Oh man, you could feel that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, oh. That, I, 
I could feel that in my chest. Oh, I can go home now. That was cool. <laughs> wow. That was That's crazy. It's like borderline raptor kind of loud right there. There was driving the golf cart amidst a Pearl Harbor reenactment, which is pretty is fun, even when you're older than 13. Yep. Uh, there was a Good luck. You'll need it. There were lighthearted reflections. It's like enough RVs for you. None of our minds went out. And more philosophical ones. But again, about people. We're all here to sort of share this freedom and this appreciation of the freedom that only a pilot can truly understand. That sort of feeling of freedom is everywhere here. If we want to reach the next generation, we need to meet them where they are. Flying simulated combat missions or piloting quadcopters or whatever it is. And we need to connect them, not to aircraft, but to the people around aircraft, to the whole aviation experience. People may come because they like prop noise, but they stay because they feel like they belong. Of course, we parents have to be some of those people too. I'm just curious what you thought of your first Oshkosh. This was awesome. Like, legitimately, this was awesome. I don't, That's it. I don't have anything more to say. <laughs> I don't have anything more to say. You coming back next year? Oh yeah, if you want me, you're paying. Ah well, call it another facet of freedom isn't free. But it is worth it. All right, till next year.